Wonderful. Welcome everybody. We'll go ahead and come to order 515. And we will start um, with roll. Chelsea Needing Camp, present. Joel? Joel Moore, present. Evening, Evening. Stephen Ward, present. Suzanne? Erickson? And Josh? Josh Newell, present. Wonderful. Members of council? Member uh -huh. Russell, present. Member Sierra, present. And city staff. Uh, Jenny Nolan, budget administrator, present. Jackie Lowe, director of finance, present. Wonderful. We'll move to approval of our minutes from January 26. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? Motion to approve those minutes. I'll take a second. So much enthusiasm for the minutes. Yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> um, any opposed to approving these minutes? Wonderful. Hearing none, they will be approved. We will move on to our new business. We're excited to welcome some new faces to this meeting. Welcome um, Director Lowe and our new member of this committee, Josh. Is it Josh, Joshua? Is there a preference? Uh, Josh is fine. Okay, wonderful. Um, I thought it would be helpful at this point in the meeting to just um, give you, you all a chance to introduce yourselves, maybe share um, a bit about who you are, how you've come to be working at the city or joining this committee. Um, and then also we can take a brief moment for the members of the committee to introduce ourselves. So it might be easier um, to start with that and then we'll pass it to our new faces. So my name is Chelsea Nienkamp. I'm the chair this year. Um, and I have been on the committee for about a year and a half. It'll be two years this summer. I'm really enjoying it. I've been in Inglewood for about almost three years. And so it's been a great way to get involved and get to know the city and to learn a lot from the members of this committee who have been on it for much longer than my tenure. Um, so that's a little bit about me. Joel, do you want to go next? Sure. Um, Joel Moore, I'm a uh, vice chair. Uh, joined the committee around the same time as Chelsea. I think we're in the same cohort. I've <clears throat> been in Inglewood about four years uh, in my uh, private life. I work for an education nonprofit uh, doing uh, education policy work. So it's uh, it's been great to be part of the committee and I'll pass it on to uh, Suzanne. Hello. Uh, Suzanne Dirksen. I've been on the committee since July 2017. Um, I served a couple terms as board chair and then handed that over to Chelsea in July. Um, I've lived in the city since 2013 and a fun fact that I like to share with people um, in, in uh, the city is that I bought my house from the city as part of a neighborhood stabilization program. So those who I've ch chatted with time and time again know that, but uh, and have heard that time and time again. Um, but I always include that with my introductions. And it's the second time I got to meet Jackie. Hi, Jackie. I don't know if you remember me from your interview. <laughs> Hi, Jackie. I guess that brings it to me. Uh, <laughs> good evening. I'm Stephen Ward. I've been in Inglewood since uh, 2011. Uh, I am the longest serving member of this com committee having served since the inception of the committee. Uh, this will be my eighth year. I am term limited, so we'll be working together for about four months. And then I get to go off to find some other sandbox to play in. Um, but uh, even after I leave, if there's anything I can share with you knowledge wise or uh, anything the committee's done in its history, I'm, I'm always happy to serve. Uh, let's start with Josh and share a little about yourself and then we'll go to Director Lowe. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, Josh Newell, so really excited to be joining all of you. 
I moved to Inglewood uh, September of 2019. Uh, Denver um, resident, I've always called it home, although I was uh, an Army brat for the first 10 years of my life. Uh, but now that uh, my wife and I are settled, uh, we're actually expecting our first child, bringing uh, her into Inglewood. So really excited to actually uh, be a part of the committee and, and be involved in the community. Um, that's a big driver of why I joined. So uh, um, resident since 2019 and uh, a member for a month now. So I think term started beginning of the month. So we're excited to have you. Director Lou. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jackie Lowe. I joined the city in February, so this is my fourth week. Most of people have been very, very helpful. I'm very excited about this opportunity to lead the finance operation and serve as financial advisor to the leadership team and collaborate with um, city manager's office to develop and execute financial solutions to reduce risks and um, ensure sustainability. Oh, we look forward to working with you and interfacing with you. Uh, Jenny has been such an incredible pillar for us on this committee and so incredibly helpful in the department. And it'll be wonderful to get to know you more and hear more from you later in tonight's meeting, which will be wonderful. Um, so yeah, we're, we're happy to have you both with us. Moving on to our next agenda item, um, just to update the other members of the committee who were not with us. Last night, we presented the reserves issues brief to the council at the study session. Um, Suzanne and Steve were there, obviously our council mem uh, members were there and I thought it was received quite well. Um, a huge testament to Steve's work on that. I thought that was, a nice way, Steve, that reception in your last year as you head out. Um, and there was some conversation around kind of further research and investigating it um, with, I'm sure, Director Lowe and, and members of council. But if anyone else has anything to share, any questions, obviously, Member Russell or Member Sierra, I would love to hear any thoughts you have. I would just like to thank you all for coming to share. It's, um, I think you did a great job. I think the committee did a great job in preparing it. And I was spe speaking with Jenny before the meeting started in that, you know, in the last uh, three or four years that you've been working on this, all of a sudden it's beginning to make more sense. Um, and uh, so I greatly appreciate you bringing this forward. And I do, Council is uh, asking for some more information, so we will see where this goes from here. But thank you, you did a great job. Mayor Pro Tem. Yeah, same here. I I want to extend my uh, extend my thanks, and also the mayor asked me to extend my thanks to the entire committee for the work that you put together in this report. Um, and yeah, so I'm looking forward to the, just taking this on. Obviously. We're going to be starting budget season here next week, uh, Director Lowe. So I'm sure that that's going to be a question that I bring up in terms of how exactly we're going to roll this into the current budget cycle. Uh, I have some ideas. I'll pitch them on Monday night. So um, yeah, and obviously, yeah, looking at looking forward to seeing what we can do uh, for the next budget cycle. So thank you. Um. And thank you. I think your encouragement on timing to make sure that that study session happened before the budget cycle did was incredibly helpful. Um, Steve. Yeah, you guys are ready. You guys are ready. So <laughs> thanks to you guys. <laughs> I just put it on the calendar. <laughs> Any other thoughts or questions about that? So I think this was one of our uh, best receptions yet at council. Um, I think we were able to answer a lot of questions that were left standing from our annual report last year. And uh, I think some of the background information uh, that we put in the report regarding uh, the philosophy of the report and some of the general philosophy on budgeting was also helpful to the overall understanding um, on the report. Sometimes I think we make recommendations and they don't completely understand where we're coming from or why we're making those recommendations. And so I, I think we were this is one of our best products as far as explaining that portion. 
I agree. And I mean, obviously it took a lot of time to make that very well reasoned, thoughtful presentation. Um, but I was thinking about how this will influence our reports, our annual reports moving forward. And is it worth maybe kind of doubling down on one or two larger themes um, and building them out versus several themes, you know, and, and is that maybe a, a better way to, to work or to be efficient? Um, I have some other thoughts around our annual report, which I will save for members choice, but I thought we had some good feedback and some ideas coming from Council last night as well, just about maybe what could be in that this year. Um, so we'll ask a few more ideas from you, Steve, before you, you were gone in June. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Well, with that, we will move forward with, we have a 2022 budget overview from Director Lowe, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, Josh, as you just heard, we're at the beginning of the budget cycle for the next year, and so you're kind of coming in at the perfect time to watch it from start to finish. Um, what these meetings normally look like is having one of the city departments come in and present their budget with some questions and kind of a direction from us on the front end um, in advance so that we can understand what they're doing and then gather information to make recommendations in a report that we submit um, this summer. So something that I like to do is as I'm listening, you know, think of any questions you have or anything that you might want to give feedback on in a report. Um, and with that, I will pass it to Director Lowe. All right, thank you. Let me share my screen with you. I need to give uh, the credits to Jenny because she compiled this overview, which is very similar to the budget refresher you saw in the past. We just added a few slides to include the fund balance so we will know where we are at with different funds. So let me share my screen with you. Um, can you see my screen? Oh, let me go back. All right. Um, yes, want to yes. give, give you the objectives. I don't know why the second. Um, the first part of the presentation is informational, just budget basics, and the funds overview. It's based on 2021 budget. And then for 2022 budgets, we want to talk about the process, the goals, the calendars. Um, and also uh, confirm a city council decision date. I definitely welcome your feedback because you have been working with the city council members for many years. Um, if we need to tweak any of the presentation, please let us know. This first one is the budget is not a law, it's just a financial plan um, to track where the money comes from and where the money is spent. Um, in business, a budget is a plan to strive towards uh, the goal to tours. In government, expenditure budget or appropriation is the legal authority. And I really appreciate that Jenny put this statement. It's actually illegal to spend more than the budget appro appro appropriation. That's one of the biggest takeaways. That's why we have had budget supplementals for city council's approval. The budget basics, importance of budget, um, it's a financial planning tool. It shapes the financial health and direction of the government. It's a visioning document that's good for discussion, discussing our goals and priorities. And based on available funding sources, we hope the budget process will address the following. How the activity fits within the government's overall goals, goals and object objectivities. Is the level of service sustainable? over the long run. Because when we review, review the financial numbers, that's historical data. Hopefully the budget give us the planning tool to plan for the future. And the fund balance, fund budget is a little bit different from the private sector. The private sector set up separate companies for legal liability. The public sector set up um, separate funds to account for certain activities. And here's a funds overview. This is all funds, including enterprise, general, capital projects. You can see the dollar amount in the millions. Oh, this is uses. Let me go back to see the um, sources. 
This is the, the revenues, enterprise funds, inter, internal service funds. What interests me most is we cannot see the revenues and expenses separately. We want to see after you have revenues, expenses, what do they, how do they impact the fund balance? So this is what we prepared. Fund balance uh, for general fund, special revenue funds, debt service, capital projects, and pro proprietary fund types. So we have a fund beginning balance, we have revenue sources, expenditures, and what is and what how this revenue and expense assumptions will impact our ending fund balance. So you can see the capital project fund seems very low in one million. Just remember this is the estimate. So I just want to give you an overview. Uh, you can see the fund balance for general fund 16.7 million. And general fund is a primary operating fund to fund all the public works, such as public works, police department, parks and recs. And want to list the major sources of revenue sources and how we pay these services. Um, so you can see we have sales use taxes, uh, property taxes, this is dollar amount, this percentage. Um, sales use tax make up 60% of our total revenue. How do we spend down the money? Um, you can see direct services uh, for police, fire department, 22 million, 38 this is a percentage. So 71% total expenses for devoted to uh, the direct services, and we have support services like IT, finance, and attorney's office. I want to point out, uh, like finance, this includes the four uh, sales use tax people. They collected 1.2 million outstanding sales use taxes in 2020, which is probably double uh, what we did in 2019. And also attorney's office, they um, found the marketplace uh, marketplace, I think facilitators, they remit sales taxes to our city. The averaging dollar amount collected is about $100,000. So I just want to make a point. There's some expenses listed in these departments are associated with revenue. So it's not all, not all the expenses are the same. The next one is special revenue funds. Uh, we listed the type of the funds the major sources and uses. I want to give you a few minutes to refresh your memory. For debt service fund, it's simple. We have a general obligation fund uh, and also police headquarter. Um, the recreational related geo bonds will mature, expire in 2023, and police headquarter will expire in 20. 36. These are all funded by property taxes. Capital projects fund. We'll have two major capital project funds. One is public improvement fund funded by vehicle use taxes or building use taxes. Capital project funds mainly are funded by general fund or public improvement fund. Um, so these are are two major funds for capital projects. Enterprise fund. Um, enterprise funds really operate like a private business. Um, they have the ability to raise revenues on their own and pay expenses as needed. The Colorado Constitution defines an enterprise as a government-owned business authorized to issue its own revenue bonds and receiving under 10% annual revenue in grants from all Colorado state local governments come on. So this is the stipulations. Director, and we, yeah, go ahead. We have one question, if you don't mind, from the committee. Go ahead. Uh, oh, so I, I cannot. Thanks. Um, I just, uh, the capital funds, I thought SURF was one of those funds as well, and I didn't see SURF this time. Excellent, excellent question. I asked Jenny the same question, but SURF is not a funded by uh, property taxes. Uh, let me, I don't know how to. Okay. SURF funds are not a funded by. Um, okay. 
There it is. It's listed under internal yeah. service. Yeah, CERFA is not funded by uh, uh, sales use taxes or public improvement fund, but but by the operating budget. It's under a different category. Let me show you. I, I asked exactly the same question. Excellent question. So if just keep in mind, just wait for a few slides. Um, so enterprise funds, we have water, sewer, storm water. We are ready to raise finance 10 million for renovations. Uh, golf course is interesting it's under enterprise fund, concrete and housing. Internal services fund serves us right here. And risk management pay for uh, insurance claims, uh, in premiums, employment benefits fund. So actually we have kind of three type of capital fund, capital improvement fund, public improvement fund, and SURF is more for vehicles, but we put this under inter-service fund because other public service departments have to pay uh, into this service. Um, any questions for the overall fund over the the fund overview before we go into the process and calendar? Okay. The 2022 budget cycle, we want to provide relevant information to city council. Uh, strive towards greater transparency. We want to budget priorities uh, with council. Uh, foster discussion with the community. Um, if you are probably all aware, we have the citywide objectives. There are one, two, three, um, seven areas. I believe any financial and human capital need to align these resources to support these outcomes. Start with the line items um, to align with organizational blueprints and council goals strategic plan. But this is our ultimate goal, but how do we go from each line item to the final result? This is yet to be determined. Here's a budget calendar I want to bring to your attention. We highlighted the date uh, for your attention. Uh, we need to get a uh, planning and zoning commissions Recommendation by April 20th, a capital improvement plan before June 9th. Uh, then we will present uh, the budget overview to the Budget Advisory Committee on July 26th. And these are just the budget planning process input, some uh, regulations and codes for your reference. Future policy discussion with the city council will include operational service levels, major capital requests, and capital financing. We hope that budget planning process will provide opportunity and tool to foster this kind of conversation. These are just criti critical dates for the council members to remember. Um, definitely will present more details on these dates. Any questions, comments, especially with some dates? And also how you would like us to revise our presentation that will bring greater clar um, clarity to the council members. Go ahead, Steve. So just one comment. Uh, you mentioned the increase in revenues courtesy of our auditors. Uh, I would like to sort of toot our own horn and mention that we noticed as a committee uh, sometime, I would say around 2018, that Inglewood was having some pretty serious problems with tax compliance. And we had business operators who literally thought it was okay not to pay taxes. And uh, so I'm very glad to see that we have taken some great strides and effectively have a team of auditors that is paying their own salary through their work, which I think yes. is great. Yes, uh, we we definitely have found innovative ways to increase revenue. Oh, by the way, there's an appendix for 
<laughs> there are additional financing options up through um, bonds, through levy, uh, but we have other ways to improve revenue. Okay. I have a question. Yeah. Thank you so much. That was very helpful, and I don't think I've seen all of those slides before, so that was that was great. Um, I think last year, correct me if I'm wrong, Jenny, or other members of the committee, we presented our report in August, and it's July this this year now. Is that an intentional change, or just the way that the calendar worked out? Um, this is Jenny. I thought we had presented the, the annual report back in July or the first part of August. I can't remember, I'll have to go look at the annual report, but I'm thinking if we can get the report done by the end of July, then it's gonna flow nicely when we present the proposed budget to city council that first week in August. Mm -hmm. Then they'll have the full picture, your input as well as staff's input. No, I agree. I think that's really helpful. I just noticed, because I think last year it was August 10th. I was looking at it recently. Um, we have the report presentation the day before our meeting, will be just like this week. Um, so we won't have that last meeting to finalize the draft and to talk through anything. So we'll have to just adjust some of our planning uh, timeline. And, and we and we still have the flexibility. We can move that uh, date from the 26th you know, to that first meeting in, in um, August. But I'll, I'll let you all think on that and uh, decide what's best. Um, yeah, maybe we can, does anyone have any strong thoughts at this point? I, I, I like it before the presentation. Steve, do you have uh, a thought with your hand up? Yeah, one of the challenges we've had in the past is that our feedback on the next year's proposed budget arrived too late to be of significant use. Um, I, I, my reading of this council indicates that they'll be less hesitant to make changes in the budget subsequent to the public hearing, which was virtually unheard of, you know, four or five years ago. So uh, I have confidence that if we get our report to council uh, before the public hearing, council would be in a better position to make adjustments that, are, that may be suggested in the report. I'm inclined to agree, but that just wanted to note that. Thanks so much. Any other thoughts or questions mm -hmm. for well, or clarification cl cl on any so of well. these slides? Too much information or too little? I liked it, Jackie. I think this is great. One of the yeah. privileges I've had as a member of this com committee is to work with all the finance directors uh, over the past uh, eight years. And each one ha seems to have a new twist on how to present this information to council. And uh, it's it's nice to see this has some some clarity and breaking down the categories and talking about where the revenue comes from. I think it's really helpful. I agree. I definitely want to look at the PDF, take some time with it because it's a lot of information lot. So and items, but I think it's incredibly helpful and, and frankly, very helpful for the lay members of this committee uh, to understand some of the the nuance and the details here, which is really helpful. So thank you for preparing it. And Jenny. Okay. Is there anything else that you have for us, Director Lowe? Um, I really want to thank you, the thought you put into the, the issue brief. It's well thought out. Um, how to use the um, assigned fund balance is forward thinking. Um, great thought. There might be some little changes to the wording, um, make the words consistent, like unassigned fund balance, not an unused reserve. Uh, so just want to ensure we are consistent. It's, it's a great document. Yeah, thank you. And the research that went into it is just phenomenal. 
Well, thank you so much for that feedback. Most of us cannot take credit for that. Um, huge, huge thank you to Member Ward for all of his work on that. Um, and some thoughtful editing from the rest of the committee. All right, well, thank you so much for, for being with us. We will go ahead and move on to what we were just discussing, actually, which is kind of our calendar for the rest of the year. Let me just get back to our agenda. Um, as you may remember from our last meeting, we kind of tried to scope out which departments we're going to be hearing from for the next few months as we kind of round the bend on this cycle and get ready for our report. And Jenny was doing some very masterful scheduling. I cannot imagine trying to get everyone on the calendar. And it looked a little different than maybe what we were hoping. But what it will look like is we will have utilities in March, HR in April. Um, and then our working session, which I think we were going to do in June, is now moved up to May, which I actually think now makes more sense, which is <laughs> uh, kismet. And then in June, we will have the municipal courts. Um, and unfortunately, that I know that there are some people who wanted things slightly different, but this was the best we could do to get those departments to be at this uh, this this meeting. So, thank you so much, Jenny, for everything you did to get this finalized. Um, and then the only note I have on the July meeting, again, since it will take place after the presentation, I'm not sure there will be much to review as far as the report is concerned. Um, Someone help me here. Is there, would we be open to and can we move our meeting up before the council meeting? Would we want to do that and can we? It's not uncommon for us to have what would be a bonus meeting sometime between our regularly scheduled meetings. Um, to tie up loose ends and make sure we're prepared for the presentation to council. So that might be one option, but I think at this point it might be premature to schedule that for the end of June, beginning of July. Um, there's still a lot of discussion about this. I'm just going to propose it for perhaps a July meeting is there's a lot of talk about um, this group's contribution to recommendations regarding capital improvements. Right now that's not in our charter. Will it become our, uh, become part of our charter and what might that look like? Um, so I think there's that council will have a lot of discussion about that between now and July, but that might be a topic of discussion for us at the July meeting. Yeah, and I think actually that can be a topic of discussion uh, for members choice. Is that something that we would like to include in a report this year? Do we have an opinion on a change to our charter that would expand our scope to include more specific capital recommendations. Which it sounded like from the way I heard it last night that council would entertain our thoughts on that matter. I can speak to it. I don't know if we want to go down that rabbit hole right now. Um, I'd love to hear basic preliminary thoughts. Yeah, yeah. So what I heard last night were two suggestions, which is one, modify the code so that we can offer recommendations on capital improvements. And the second option was to not modify the code, but allow us to rec make recommendations to P&Z. Um, and I like that idea because it seems a little more cohesive and it would prevent us from um, contradicting um, other community groups um, and it might be the path of least resistance as well. Joel? Yeah, Joel keeps yeah. nodding. You know, <laughs> I, I was agreeing with that. I, I, I think I was a little more liberal with my thought before you actually said that, but uh, I, I think that there's there is value in having some Maybe it is the recommendations to uh, the that other group, um, but I, I do feel like it was uh, 
a useful uh, piece and something we all uh, agreed on with the potential use of like the unreserved fund balance for uh, parks improvements and things like that without naming any sort of like, you know, specific, you know, skate park or uh, individual items. I think the general idea was useful. So uh, maybe we can keep going down that track. I don't know where that leads, but. Steve, do you have a thought? So this issue doesn't affect me as profoundly as it affects the other members. Uh, I will say, personally, I've found the handcuffs pretty frustrating in past cycles. Um, I, you know, as I told Council last night, I think that this committee is uniquely positioned to weigh in on capital projects uh, in a way that Council would find useful. Um, P and Z doesn't, uh, ha they're not tasked with understanding the numbers. Uh, so it's kind of like, I, I want uh, paved alleys or, you know, I want a new park two blocks away from my house. And I'm not saying that's what their membership does. It's just a different mentality associated with capital projects from the P and Z standpoint, as opposed to the budget advisory committee standpoint. Um, so I, my recommendation would be uh, in the annual report, uh, to put a recommendation for what the membership wants the committee to look like going forward. Um, and if there's a recommendation to make a, a change to the enabling ordinance, um, that would be appropriate. Although I will say that council may act um, based on what we heard last night, they might act prior to that report coming out um, to at least just remove the restriction. And what the members subsequently do with that less restrictive charter is up to them. Josh, if you're tracking, this is because our, the charter that created this committee uh, allows us, we offer, you know, things in our report and recommendations as citizens to council on budget expenses and expenditures, um, but we cannot make specific recommendations about capital projects, um, which we sometimes run up against a little bit. Um, I think it would be interesting. My perspective is I am more inclined to simply remove that limitation from the charter without adding the middleman of having to go to PNZ for a couple of reasons. One of which is it's just like we're submitting another report to another group and this, and you know, I think some of, and I, I do think Steve is right about, we have this kind of the numbers component of what we're doing. And it doesn't mean we have to make capital recommendations, but it means we would have the option if, if something came up in a year where it made sense um, which is something that I'm inclined toward. Um, but I think what would be helpful and from what I took from last night is, are there any other thoughts we have? Some of you have been serving on this committee for several years, some of us newer. Anything that we could change about how we're structured that would just make this more efficient, more effective, that we think would be more useful, whether that be the ability to make recommendations on capital projects or something else. Um, I think this is an opportunity to maybe give it a little bit of thought and, you know, don't go crazy, but have some creativity. And is there anything that we, in our experience, could be tweaked? Um, and, and maybe that could be a, a section of our report for this year. And maybe we could bring some ideas to our May work session on that. And then we can kind of decide if we have consensus or not, because we'll have to have consensus on, on which direction we go. Um, since I think we're solidly in members choice, I will just share a couple other things about the report process. Um, I have a few things in my mind that have risen this year as we've been listening. Um, one is which uh, Steve will like this is the idea of maybe a consolidated grant writer for the city, something we could do there that's come up a lot. Um, and then obviously the elephant in the room is the long term asset reserve fund and I would like to learn more. I need to learn more. I need to better understand it. But I think what really crystallized for me and what we discussed in the reserves issue brief was, um, you know, money with no clear policy around it is, is not maybe in the best interest of the city or of the citizens, right? And so if this is money that's sitting without maybe a clear policy of how it should be spent and within a, you know, kind of a clear timeline, I'd really entertain a conversation around maybe what a recommendation would look like, um, but I need to learn a lot more. So Steve, if you have resources, you can send me. Jenny, if there are any resources about how we can better understand this topic, both its inception and then kind of how it's been used for the last several years, 
I would really value that. I don't know if anyone else feels that way. Absolutely, I, that would be helpful for me. In it, um, just so I'm clear, you're, you're thinking more information on the later fund in addition to the issue brief that the committee has created in the past? I don't know if there is any other information out there. I, I do appreciate having that, which I think is from, what was that, Steve, 2015, 2016? Yep, and, and one of the uh, committee members at that time was, um, um, oh, he's a former council member, Moore, I'm, I'm drawing a blank on his first name all of a sudden. John Moore. John Moore. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, and so that that issue brief, I mean, you, you're you're really getting the um, perspective of that council, that former council member, as a as a budget advisory committee member. Uh, you're, you're getting because he he was one of the um, ones who um, created the the later fund and and had the thought process of um, using those funds on long-term assets because it was long-term assets that were sold that created that reserve. Right. So I, I, I just don't know what additional information we can provide you. I mean, that we have got that issue brief and we, we've sent you the information you know, that uh, council had requested. Um, I just don't know what other additional information. Yeah, there may not be, and that's totally fine. I just wasn't okay. sure if there was, and maybe it will just take us doing some, digging through some financial reports to kind of track it over time. Because um, uh, we do have, um, in, in the budget book, um, we do show, we, we give you like a, a five-year uh, perspective of of the long-term asset reserve and what it's been spent on. And I can definitely provide you um, screenshots of that, of those pages out of the budget book, if that would be helpful. I would, that would be okay. helpful. Okay. <laughs> Just so I can see, I think it, that's exactly what I'm looking for is how has it been spent over the years? Kind of what's the policy that's been guiding it? Okay. Um, Cause I think that there are some, you know, folks in the community who would like to see it, something more specific done with it. Okay. Um, and so just to help kind of guide a, a clear recommendation, that historical perspective would be great. I hate to ask that of you if there's something. Oh, that you no, that, that's, that's easy for me. I can easily, um, you know, do screen or snips, you know, from the budget book. Okay. And, and give you uh, from at least from the point of or view of the issue brief gave it, uh, gives you historical information from inception up until that issue brief date. And then I can definitely continue um, the transactions or, or what has happened with that um, reserve from then up until now. That's incredibly helpful and generous. Thank you for your time, Jenny. Oh, sure. No, no problem. That will help those of us who have not been pouring through the city financials for many years. OK, no worries. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, anyone else want to throw out any kind of initial thoughts or high level thinking about report that you want to share? that we should kind of be brainstorming on before we bring formal ideas in May? In terms of how to go about it? Either how to go about it or any just things maybe you think you'd, it'd be interesting to address. Yeah, um, I, I really like the approach we used last year where we agreed on a number of topics and then broke into to subcommittees. Um, I think that I think that worked well. Um, something that I tried before you and Joel joined us was connecting with other um, board and commission chairs to see what kind of budget type conversations those groups were having. I wasn't super successful. <laughs> I didn't get a whole lot of useful feedback, but that was two or three years ago. Um, we might have luck again. Um, like ETAC was really useful. That's when we found out that they were having a lot of conversations about the single single hauler trash um, issue. Um, I think I sat down with Parks and Rec. Um, so it's an idea. Um, I'll just pro. You know, we have some. You you guys are new within the last. You know, 
year, year and a half. So it, we could try that again if you're up for it. Yeah, I think that sounds like a great idea. Um, and I think initially the reason that I wanted to do that is because we are the voice of the community and we're just five of many. Um, it'd be nice to hear about what other community groups are talking about. Does anyone have anything else for members choice? Wonderful. Well then, um, the only thing I'll leave you with is be percolating any ideas. I know I'm getting started very, very early, but that's in my nature. <laughs> um, and I'm looking forward to uh, hearing from some departments that I have not heard from before in our next few meetings. So I think it will be really interesting um, and I look forward to it. And uh, with that, I think we can adjourn. Have a wonderful evening. Thanks, Chelsea. Thanks, Chelsea. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Thanks, Chelsea. Chelsea. Nice to meet you, Josh. Thanks. Nice to meet you. Bye. Take care. Mm -hmm.